Welcome, this is Motorman Elwin here at Radio BVM. We're back on the air again on a day with, uh, I guess you could say, liquid sunshine here in Burnaby. And today we have another special guest. All our guests are special here, but today we have uh, a Scott Robertson of the Scott Robertson Trio. Welcome, Scott, how are you today? Very good, thanks for having me. Our pleasure, the pleasure is always ours. Uh, tell me about your, your trio, or I guess it's not always a trio, but... Uh, hmm. Not always a trio, but it's called the Tin Pan Trio, and we have been playing here probably for close to 20 years now. The first uh, program director that booked us here was Joy, and uh, I came in, I had a trio that we called the Scott Robertson Trio, and she was going to book us here, and she said all the tunes here have to be from... 1890s to 1925 and fit that style. So I went down to the Vancouver Library and I did a lot of homework. I compiled a whole list of tunes from those dates. I checked all of the copyright dates and uh, the guitar player in my group has this wonderful six string banjo and we put all the tunes together and the band together especially for Burnaby Village Museum. And since most of the tunes we play were from Tin Pan Alley, we called it the Tin Pan Trio. Actually, let's just go back a little bit. Talk to me about the Tin Pan Alley. Well, Tin Pan Alley uh, is a area of New York where uh, there was a, a large collection of music publishers in the day. Uh, some of the, the history is a little sketchy on it. Apparently it started off as a single uh, publishing company, but they all collected in one area, and there was a lot of uh, pianos going, working in the, in the day. So it was, a, I guess it was sort of a play on the word of a, of a sound of a tin pan going. Uh, but in those days, of course, the money in the music business was in the published sheet music, right? As Because radios weren't very common in the day. I think they were probably more of a luxury item. Mm -hmm. And of course, silent movies. And uh, so music was live, and so there was a huge business to be had in selling sheet music. And so they all collected in that area, and some of the songs, of course, sold in the millions. So right. we selected a, a large portion of our repertoire from tunes that were published in those days by those publishers. Now tell me, how is it that uh, you came to be playing this genre of music? Is it something that, uh, did you uh, pick up the guitar when you were a kid kind of thing, or how did it all start? Okay, well, I'm a drummer. Okay, you're a drummer, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, we, no, I've always liked older music. All right. Always, always. Uh, my, my dad always played big band music around the house from the 30s and 40s. But uh, as I said, as, as I go out and work, and when we came to, to see if we could play here at Burnaby Village, there was a very strict policy that 1925 was the cutoff date. So it was a real motivator for me to look into the music of that genre. And we started rehearsing the tunes of that genre, again, largely driven by motivation to play here. Since then, we've played other tourist events and private events. Anytime somebody wants a sort of a period sort of theme to their party, we get dates at it, but it was all motivated to play here and stay within the time frame that Burnaby Village Museum represents. So you are a drummer. I the question drummer. is, do you also sing? I do not. I do not sing. The judge was very clear on that. I'm not to do that anymore. All right. I understand that you have, uh, you, you're, you have crossed paths with uh, Mr. Don Bellamy. Is that true? Don Bellamy was my first drum teacher. I started off in the White Spot Pipe Band under his direction, and I started off my lessons in his basement in his house on Dundas Street. So let me just get this straight. Are we talking about the same Don Bellamy that was once a motorman with the Interurban, and I think later on he became involved with uh, City Council? He was a city councillor. He, he was a Vancouver police officer for many years. He was the drum major for the Vancouver Police Pipe Band, and he became a Vancouver city councillor, yes. Oh, indeed. So we are talking about the same Don Bell. Okay. I didn't know about the motorman stuff. Oh, yes. I guess he's, he's a man of many, many talents. He, he, he was. <laughs> he is. Yeah. 
the, the time period, the 1920s, what is it about the era that, you, that, that attracts you? You obviously were not around then. Or were you? No, no, I was not. I'm glad to say I was not. I came along a little bit later. Uh, well, I do just some great songwriting of, of that genre. I mean, absolutely fabulous, you know. And uh, when that music is played properly and played with respect to its style, uh, I don't see how anybody couldn't like it, how anybody couldn't be uh, endeared to it. Exactly. Tell me, surely you must have some favorites. Of, of all the year, of the, the vast uh, music background that you have. Do you have any favorite tunes at all? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm usually attracted to some uh, nice melodies. Um, Anything in particular? <coughs> One tune that really sticks out in my mind mm -hmm. that I like to play all the time is Blue Moon. Oh, Blue Moon. Mm. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Who was the original uh, writer of that? Richard Rogers. Richard Rogers. Yeah. Of course, there have been over the years many, uh, many covers of that. Many, 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 many. Well, that's what a great tune is. Is that there's so many ways you can play the tune. It will work as a, as a ballad. It'll work as a swing tune. It can be played as a cha-cha for dancers, as a rumba. Just you can make it work so many different ways. That's what a great tune is. Let's talk about the Hotel Vancouver Panorama Roof. Have you ever played up there? Just one, one day. I had a private job with my uh, trio there. Not, not the Tin Pan Trio. We were playing, you know, sort of a, a cool jazz kind of thing. Okay. But so you uh, weren't there on a, a New Year's Eve kind of thing? No. <laughs> no, just a private date there one time. So you're, you must have crossed paths with Mr. Mr. Adele Richards. Oh, yes. Yeah. Any stories there? Oh, no, not too many. I've, I've played in his band a couple of times. Good man. You know, I think, oh, yeah, very, very much so. Very, very nice man. Wonderful. All right. <clears throat> you, again, you're listening to um, Motorman Elwin here on Radio BVM. We are live here with uh, Mr. Scott Robertson of, of uh, the Scott Robertson Trio. Uh, not always a trio, but sometimes they are also the Tin Pan Band. Is yes. Is that correct? Every once in a while we manage to get a clarinet to play with us and we, we play as the Tin Pan Band. But you do not play that clarinet? No, I do not. All right. <laughs> so any, other, uh, any other comments that uh, we should talk about, about the Tin Pan Band music? that I haven't covered yet? No, I think we got it. Uh, aside from the Tin Pan Band, I, I also have a group called Swing Patrol. Oh, okay. Which Talk is, to me about Swing Patrol. Well, it's largely the same group of people. It's just right. that when we play, include music to go right up to the 1930s and 40s, uh -huh. which we don't really do here because it doesn't fit the theme of the park. But uh, uh, we, we do play uh, swing tunes and even right up into the 1950s, uh, often a five-piece band with two horns. I named the band Swing Patrol uh, after a band that played during the Second World War. My father was a transport sergeant in the war. Oh, okay. And he, one of the things he was assigned to was uh, entertainment unit. And he, it was, it was called the Canadian Army Show. And every three months it would reform as a different show. And one of the incarnations was called Swing Patrol, which had a swing band. And it really uh, affected my father because he was not a musician himself, but he was just so impressed with the, the standard that these musicians performed at and all the things that they could do. And uh, he was, in, of course, in the Army for several years during the war, but all I ever heard about was this three-month period where he's driving around the Swing Patrol band. And these guys would entertain troops, uh, sometimes very close to the front. Sometimes these guys would uh, be under a great deal of stress, and then they would come off the lines, and they'd, they'd, there'd be this, this release with this swing band and a piece of home there. So I named my swing patrol band in, in their honor. I want, excuse me, I want to talk to you about dancing. Uh, are you a dancer at all? I am not. I'm always behind the drums, so I don't get a chance to dance. All right. <laughs> it's, Maybe one day. It's the horn players that can put their horn down and go and have a dance. I don't All right. With that, uh, thank you, uh, Scott Robertson. And uh, thank you again for dropping by our studios here at Radio BVM. Again, this is uh, Motorman Elwin here. Thank you.